Hey everybody, welcome back again to Ken Tamplin Vocal Academy where the proof is in the singing. I'm continuing my really fun series on taking these epic isolated vocal tracks. I'm doing a vocal analysis, a vocal tutorial, talking about the recording process, a little backstories about the band. Next up, Ian Gillen, the band is Deep Purple, the song is called Highway Star. Now, before we get started, if you wouldn't mind, please like and subscribe to my channel, I'd really appreciate that. I also have a singing course where I not only talk about all this stuff, but I show you right here at Ken Tamplin Vocal Academy how to get to all of these amazing places for singing in hopes to help make you a great singer as well. I also did a version of this song. You can find it down in the description. You can see how I stack up to the song. But I want to point out some things along the way. Now, Ian Gillen uh, came from an era that kind of started the most amazing trend of singers through Deep Purple. You had Ian Gillen, you had Glenn Hughes, you had David Coverdale, you had, um, oh my gosh, uh, Graham Bonnet, you had Jolyn Turner, you had, I mean, all these crazy amazing singers that went through there um, that, gosh, I mean, I've yet to see them kind of really be equal to this very day. But the interesting thing about the early part of Ian Gillen, which you're gonna find out more about the later part, and I talk, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about this in a minute, um, is that he had a transition of the way he sang in his early days, mostly chesty stuff on the bottom, a lot of head voice falsetto stuff, not a lot of stuff in the middle, right? So, and you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. And later, um, that, that actually changed quite a bit. So, without much further ado, let's get started. Ian Gillen, Deep Purple, song is Highway Star. Let's rock this thing. Okay, that's the epic vocal intro. And I did it with the music so you could get a flavor of how it sits in the track. Now, one thing I want you guys to really go back and listen to, replay the video is, did you notice how many different layers of vocals actually went into that initial scream? I wanted to mask it at first until we can kind of expose it right now so you can hear it. Now let's do it again without the track. Check this out. Okay, there's not only four different layers of them repeating kind of like a, a delay would if it came, you know, one after another, but in each one of the layers, it's multi-tracked, okay? So there are a lot of vocal go vocals going on. I wanna turn my volume up here a little bit so I can hear it a little better myself. But if you notice, I want you to take a listen one more time how that each one of them as they go by, there's four of them before the lead vocal starts. Uh, 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 right, and it keeps repeating. Now, I promised a vocal tutorial on this, so for you singers out there that say, oh, this song's easy, or oh, this song's hard, or you know, the bottom part's easy, but the top's hard to sing, and that epic, epic scream at the beginning is impossible. I want you to do something with me, okay? For you singers out there, this is specifically for you guys who wanna learn how to sing, do this. And you'll see I do this in my version. I want you to start really lightly really lightly and get through the passaggio, which is that little speed bump that goes from your chest voice to your head voice, the passaggio break or falsetto break, right? I want you to go, ah, right? Play with it a little bit, but I want you to practice this at a really light volume to where you can get in and out of that passaggio break without hearing the yodel, okay? So I don't wanna hear, ah, I don't wanna hear that gear shift. I wanna hear, ah, right? And this, my friends, is the holy grail to learning how to understand to connect your chest voice to your head voice. Now, why this makes this so unique is because since there's no note value, meaning I'm not doing a scale or singing a melody, it's easier to relax the throat and keep it open to go, ah, right? Now, if I were to go, and go through it like that. It's harder to negotiate those notes in the throat, so there's a greater chance of hearing that crack. Now, why is this important? It's important because once you grow the passaggio and you strengthen it, you can start to add a little weight into the sound. Alaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaa
la to where it sounds like this. Okay, now let's just do it together with the track. Why not? I'm here, right? I'll sing with it. Here we go. La So hopefully that hopefully I translated because I can't hear what the mix is sounding like, but hopefully you got the idea. And again, check out my version in the description because I'm walking you guys through the holy grail to Ken, how are you able to sing with all that range? Well, once you start to put these together, and I cover all of this in my singing course, I give you all the exercises, I walk you through this step by step exactly how to do this so that when you want to sing Steve Perry or you want to sing Bruno Mars or Michael Jackson or um, a high range you know, a tenor singer, whomever it is, Mickey Thomas, whatever, um, you start here first. You want to sell like Ian Gillen, right? You start here first and you develop this and you build a little more strength, a little more strength over time until all of a sudden you're not killing yourself to get to these notes. You're finessing your way into it. Now let's continue. Here we go. Nobody gonna take my car and gonna race it to the ground. Nobody gonna beat my car and gonna break the speed of sound. Now what do you guys, hold on. What do you guys notice about that? Well, the first thing I notice is that it's really heavily multi-tracked. Listen to how many voices that are going on. Now, I want to put the track back in because I want to give you a flavor of how you probably wouldn't have noticed that with the track in. Check it out with the track. Here we go. Nobody gonna take my car and gonna race into the ground. Nobody gonna beat my car and gonna break the speed of sound. It just sounds like a big voice, right? You can't really tell unless you're really listening for it. Now let's take the track out. Check it out. Nobody gonna take my car and gonna race it to the ground. Nobody gonna beat my car and gonna break the speed of sound. Cool. You hear all the nobody gonna da 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 da. You're hearing like all those vocals going on all at the same time, and it makes for a big sound. Now this was common practice back in these days, and you know went on in through the 80s too, where they'd mega multi-track the vocal in order to be able to get this effect. And it's really cool. I really like how big it makes it, and I do it myself all the time. But there is a caveat to this, and a danger. And the danger is this. When you multi-track the voice like this, it takes away from all the nuance and all of the, the cool little gesticulations of the voice, the, the sweet tones and, and the sensitivities and the personality itself. So when you're hearing stuff, and, you, and you'll hear things like Back in Black from ACDC and all kinds of bands that have done over the years, you'll notice that it takes away from the personality or personal, personalness of the voice itself. But with that said, oh, the other thing I wanted to mention is that in this song and in a lot of the early Deep Purple stuff with Ian Gillen, um, he had two voice types. He had his kind of chest belting type, and then he had kind of no mid-range at all to speak of. I mean, there was no upper mid-range at all. And then the high screams, ah! you know, the real high stuff. And there was no middle ground. Now, this was also true of like Steven Tyler, for example. You listen to early Aerosmith and songs like Dream On, you'll notice that he has a lot of chest voice, no mid voice really to speak of at all. And then Dream On! you know, all the really high stuff. And so there were a few of these singers back then that kind of faked you out to make you think they had all this range. Now, it's interesting that later on, like songs like Perfect Stranger, and I did a version of that too, maybe I'll put that in the description also, where later Ian Gillen did use an upper belted mid voice. That song's pretty tough to sing, right? Um, you, you have A Child in Time is another example where there's a lot of low register uh, stuff, a lot of high register stuff, but nothing in the middle, which is very different than Perfect Stranger. That's also true of Steven Tyler and other people types like them, where you listen to early early Aerosmith, Walk This Way, and you know, like I said, Dream On and other toys in the attic and, and whatever. Um, and you listen to his later stuff, he has a lot of high range mid belting stuff. So they worked on their voices over time. So even in their heyday, they weren't showcasing some of the stuff that they wound up doing later. I cover all of that in my singing course as well. But I did want to annotate that as we were going along so you could kind of look out for that with a view towards that as, as we're doing this, all right? Here we go, let's continue. Oh, 
Oh, it's a killing machine. It's got a everything. Like a driving power. Big fat tires and everything. Now, hear all the extra voices going on. Something else I want to note that I've pointed out a lot of times is if you notice, he's not powering. Oh, it's a killer machine. It's got everything. He's not doing that, okay? His, oh, it's a killer machine. You know, he's kind of really, real ginger, real sensitive on the sound. He's really light. And because he's got so many voices going on, it makes it sound like it's heavier than it is. And then when I bring the track back in, the track creates so much energy, it makes it sound like he's singing heavier. Check it out. Oh, it's a killer machine. It's got everything. Without the track, check it out. Oh, it's a killing machine. It's got everything. See, there's not much girth heaviness, belting, killing it kind of vibe going on. It's it's pretty laid back. I think it's interesting too. Little uh, little side note. Um, apparently, how this song was written is that he and Richie Blackmore were on a bus, a tour bus, and they had a reporter, you know, uh, someone that was doing a story on them, and they said, well, how do you write songs? And Richie goes, well, you know, I just kind of come up with a riff, like, right? Can't you kind of picture that being in the bus, and Richie Blackmore has this, like, like burn or whatever, right? And, and can you, it's that guitar style that you hear at the intro of the song, and then you could just hear it as Ian Gillen said, well, yeah, he's right. He comes up with a guitar like, gung, 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 gung. and then I just kind of, nobody going to take my butt. And so as they were demonstrating to this reporter that was doing a story on the band, uh, this how they would write a song, that was the inception of Highway Star. I think that's really interesting. And also the fact that they were on the road when they did it, so they called it Highway Star, etc. So a lot of little nuance to the backdrop of that. But anyway, let's continue. Here we go. Like a driving power, big fat tires and everything. I love it, and I need it, I feel it. Can I do this with you? I love it, I need it, I feel it. Right? That's not pulling any chest up in the sound. That's 100% a reinforced falsetto or hey, hey, hey. That's it. He's kind of distorting it a little bit with three or four voices going on, and that's that sound. So again, you put back the track, and it sounds monstrous. I love it. Right? So that's actually really cool. All right, let's continue. Here we go. Yeah, it's a wild hurricane. All right, hold tight. I'm a highway star. And if you notice, to reinforce what I said even more about how many vocal tracks are going on, I think there's four voices because when he's, I'm a highway star and it goes up, there's a, a harmony that goes below it, right? And you can hear that that's double tracked and this is double tracked. So it sounds to me like there's four voices going on on this main lead vocal through the entire uh, song. Now, the other thing that's kind of interesting is he didn't even really bother to get it that close, right? It's kind of interesting. It, it's not like a perfect, you know, four takes where you can't tell if there's really, no, he just kind of sang it and it is what it is and they kind of put it all together and they became Highway Star, right? Next next line, here we go. Nobody gonna take my girl. I'm gonna keep her to the end And nobody gonna have my girl She stays close on every bend Now, oh. on this uh, uh, take or this section of the verse He does lean into the sound a little bit Nobody's gonna da -na 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 Right, he's kind of leaning into it and he is kind of ramping up the sound Now, he's still not like crushing it with his voice But he's getting more distortion Now, Again, this is a caveat for you guys that just want distortion now and you want it so fast. He maturated this time. He matured this over time, okay? So his distortion kicks in with a lower volume and a little more easily than trying to create so much force and pressure in the throat. He's able to access this a lot more easily because he's been doing it a long time. So there's an illusion that he's like really crushing it and killing it. He's not. He just is able to turn on the volume of the harmonic distortion when he wants it and kind of dial it back when he doesn't. So I want to point that out to you um, guys that are really young and green in this. Say, I want that distortion. I want to get my sound. He did this over time. So be careful of that. I have, I have several videos out on this and I cover this thoroughly in my singing course so you don't blow your voice out, okay? Let's, and by the way, he did blow his voice out. In fact, um, 
One of the reasons there was so much tension in the band is he drank a lot, did a lot of drugs, and it was a bummer because um, he, he messed up a lot of shows and, and wound up cleaning up later on, and that's what we have later, which is Perfect Strangers and songs like that, because of him you know, taking care of himself, okay, and his voice. Oh, she's a killer machine. She got everything. Like a moving mouth, body controlling everything. I love her. I need her. I see her. Now, if you notice too, um, there's not a lot of effect on these vocals, which was really surprising to me, because um, back in this this day and age, there was either a lot of effect, or they kind of went for you know trying different things, singing through tremolos and singing through whirlies and all kinds of crazy stuff. But you know, they kept it pretty true to form, which makes the band hit harder. Okay, what it mean is like really upfront and in your face, so you get the sensation of it really driving, uh, really personal and in your face. Let me show you what I mean real quick by that. So check it out. I'll put the music Music back in. So if you notice, there's not a, the effect is that he, he quadruple tracked his vocal, so that made up for not a lot of reverbs and stuff. Check it out. And there's a little bit of delay on his voice, and that's almost, and then some reverb, and, and that's pretty much it. Check it out. Okay, right? Yeah, she turns me on all right, hold tight. Now, did you notice at the end of that phrase how light he is on the sound? Check it out, man. This is really interesting. By the way, I got to say this for what it is. We are listening to one of the most epic rock songs ever recorded. I think you could probably agree to that. I would hope you would. And you younger guys out there have never even heard the song. You didn't grow up like we did in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, right? I bring it up because you're kind of in the studio with Ian Gillen right now. Really, I'm not kidding. It's like, did he ever imagine that this song would become as legendary and as epic as it's become? And we are like, kind of, can you do this with me for a minute? I want you to just humor me for a second. I want to play just this last line. I want to pretend that you're in the studio. There's glass. You're watching Ian Gillen sing this for the very first time. And the band had no idea the success that this song would draw. Check it out. Let's do this again, right? You're behind the glass and you're watching him do this. Check this out. Yeah, she turns me on. All right, hold tight. I'm a highway star. And Richie Blackmore says, yeah, that sounds pretty good to me. Eh, let's go with it. That's the fifth take. Why not? Right? And you're like, we are just, we're witnessing or we're actually, <laughs> we're in a time capsule going back to the most big time in all of rock history and we get to like be a fly on the wall right now with this stuff that's why this thing is is so crazy anyway back to what i was saying about his light vocal so at the end notice how light he is on this sound so he's in kind of a mixed voice I'm a highway star. right he's in kind of a mixed voice he's not going stop he's not hitting it he's backing off He's being real gentle, and he's coming back for like a cool mix. Now, that is some stuff that he did. I remember doing Child in Time, um, and you should listen to my version of that. In fact, I will put Child in Time in the description so you can check out the other Gillen stuff that I've done. But uh, it's not that easy to do that, to back off the sound and that, that range and be able to be that clean. Now, of course, we know there's a lot of instrumental break, and I don't want to take the time to do this. I want to stay focused on the vocals, because that's what we do here. But I want to continue. Here we go. Nobody gonna take my head. I got speed inside my brain. Nobody gonna steal my head now that I'm on the road again. Now, I want to show you um, something that happens that's a phenomena of recording. Okay, it's gonna trip you out a little bit. When a voice reaches its I'm gonna say apex, but it's it's direct center of the pitch being really close, like two engines in an airplane, and the unison becomes so close. Instead of the sound getting wide and fat and pushed out to the outside to some degree, the frequency I'm talking about, it comes direct center and it has a perception of being louder. In fact, it is a little louder because the frequency itself is doubling up on itself, right? And because it's doubling up on itself, 
it gets louder. Now, this is just a recording thing that I want you, you uh, tech heads out there and you engineers to check this out. So when it gets to the E vowel, I want you to notice how much louder or perception of the perceived loudness there is in the track when it stops, you know, doing the mm, 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 of the engines of the airplane and the unison becomes really, really spot on to where you can hardly tell that it's double track with all four of these vocals going on. You can hear it get louder. Check it out. Nobody gonna take my head. I got speed inside my brain. Nobody gonna steal my head now that I'm on the road again. Again. Brain. Right. It's got this interesting effect that happens, and then it, but it loses some of the fatness in the sound. Okay. All right. Let's continue. Here we go. Like a moving ground, an open road, and everything. Now, one of the things that also kind of tripped me out about this tune is I used to think that this was very spontaneous, you know, that the whole song would sounded really, it didn't sound like it was so thought out that it was like everything was just cookie cutter, cut and dried, right? But when I hear lines like this in the song, I realize, no, it is that cookie cutter because he couldn't have tracked it four times to get it to be this precise in the sound. So if you listen, as, as, as spontaneous as it may sounded as he goes through the track, like he's just kind of vibing on it, whatever, it was very planned and very thought out. Here's what I mean. Check it out. Like a moving ground, an open road, and everything. Like a moving ground, an open road. You know, you couldn't go. It'd be like, <laughs> like a moving ground, an open road, and everything. Right. <laughs> everything. Right. So listen closely to this. Check it out. Like a moving ground, an open road, and everything. Even the pause on and everything, right? <laughs> Now, if you notice the 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 note value or the melody value on this, it's he he didn't take hardly any time. I don't think uh, he probably did with the phrasing, but not necessarily with the melodies matching. It, he didn't really even care that much. You can't even make out a note value right here. Eight cylinders, oh my! Eight cylinders, oh man! Right, it's just kind of shouting it out. This sounds like something Gene Simmons would do on a Kiss song or something, right? Eight cylinders, oh my! All right, hold tight. Now, I love the over-dramatized vibrato. Stop! It's like an engine starting cold in the morning. It's a 57 Chevy. All right, let's continue. There's another big solo, as you know. And uh, let's go back to the end of the song. Here we go. And here we're going, we're going, we're going, we're going, we're going. There we go. Nobody gonna take my car. I'm gonna raise it to the ground. Nobody gonna beat my car. It's gonna break the speed of sound. Oh, it's a killing machine. It's got everything. Now, I don't know this for certain, and I haven't done a spectral anal spectrum analyzing a graph of this, but that sure sounds exactly like the first time it happened. And it wouldn't surprise me if they just recorded it to a two track and reflew in the back end of the song. Uh, maybe they didn't, but there's almost no changes. And it's kind of weird because you'd think that they would have a little bit of something different because the band's doing something different from end to end, but this vocal isn't. So it's a little interesting for me to kind of take a note of that. But like a driving power, big fat tires and everything. I love it, and I need it, I bleed it. Now the I bleed it, that sounded different because he, he hung on a little longer. Yeah, it's a mad hurricane. Oh. Now the lyrics are obviously different, so it's definitely recorded different here towards the end. But And so maybe I'm wrong, you know, but I, I guess maybe I, 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 I'm a little disappointed. How could I be disappointed in the Highway Star? Uh, that it, he could have changed it up a little bit more because he's a really creative guy, but that's just a personal preference thing. Yeah, it's a mad hurricane. All right, hold tight. I'm a Highway Star. Now, when you hear this last bit in the recording, and I wrestled with this when I did my version, because I did some higher notes and I did ratchet it up and I did try to take it to a new level for me for just a personal best thing. I used to think that all of those phrases were contiguous and that he held his breath through the whole thing on I'm a highway star, I'm a highway star, I'm a highway star, but he doesn't, he breathes in between each one. Check it out. Yeah, it's a mad hurricane, all right, 
hold tight. I'm a highway star. I'm a highway star. I'm a highway star. Now there's a perception with the music in it. And I guess it's just because because it's on the and there's a perception that I'm a highway star, I'm a highway star, I'm a like he just sang it like in one line, but you can clearly hear that he took breaths between the phrases. So anyway, gang, hopefully you're enjoying this as much as I am. I'm enjoying presenting this to you, sharing my information with you. Uh, and I definitely have a lot more cool videos coming out. So definitely check out my next video.